In this video, I'm going to lay out the UI for the game itself. I'll make player areas to show the player's chips and cards. I'll create a player dialog to hold their place ribbon and turn marker. Finally, I'll add the gift draw deck, current gift card, and number of chips bid to the center of the board. Start by making the main menu canvas inactive and the game canvas active so that our changes will be visible. Then add a background image that fills the canvas and has the felt sprite. Start the player area by creating an image, sizing it to 600 by 200, and positioning it in the bottom right. Give it the border underscore zero sprite and color it red. These will eventually be colored to match the player's color. Set the tag of this object to player. The player area needs to show the number of chips the player has, the cards that they have taken, and their current score. Create an image of size 64 by 64 with the chip sprite. Position the image on the left side of the area. Add a text mesh child object, center the text, color it black, and size the font so that a large two-digit number fits. Make an area to hold the cards by creating an empty object. Size it to 500 by 128 and position it in the upper right. Give it a horizontal layout that controls the width and height of its children and expands the height. This area is going to hold all the player's cards and will use a negative spacing to compress sequential cards together and a spacer to separate cards that aren't in a sequence. Now I'll create a card. Make an image and give it the card front sprite. Its size is controlled by the horizontal layout, so we'll need to add a layout element with a preferred width of 96 to tell the horizontal layout how wide the card should be. Now add two text mesh objects to the card to display the value of the card. One should be centered in the middle of the card with a large outlined font. To add the outline to the font, find the outline material that we created earlier and drag it into the font face section of the text mesh object. The second text object should also contain the value of the card, but display it in a small, non-outlined font in the top left. This text is positioned to be visible when sequential cards are compressed together. Next, I'll work on the spacing for sequential cards and a spacer object to separate sequences. Duplicate the card a couple times and tweak the spacing of the horizontal layout so that the cards are separated just enough to read the upper left text value. Create an empty spacer object and add a layout element behavior. Set the preferred width to 160 and add another card to see the effect of the spacer object. I'm going to show the player's score along the bottom of the player area as a formula that will make it clear how the score is calculated. Start with an empty object that fills the bottom and has a height of 64. Add a text mesh object with the text score and orient it in the bottom left corner. Add a second text mesh object to display the total score. Set the text to equals minus 99 make it bold, and position it in the bottom right. Make a copy of the chip count text in the chip object. Make the text white and move it down to the score line. Do the same with the upper left text in the card object. Set the text to minus 33, make it white, and move it down to the score line. That's all for the player area. The script code is going to need to create cards and spacers as the player takes cards during the game. To accommodate that, Make the card and the spacer a prefab by dragging these objects to the prefab directory. The player area itself will also be a prefab, so that if we need to make changes to it later, we can make the change to one copy and apply the change to the other six areas. The players start without cards, so delete the cards and spacer objects before making the player area prefab. Also add the player area GUI behavior to the prefab. Make a copy of the player area for all seven players. Arrange these just like we did on the main menu. 
set the position member of the player area GUI script the same way that we did for the player login area on the main menu. Next, I'll make the player dialogues. In a more complex game, I use dialogues to get responses from the players or to display extra information that can't fit onto the main UI. For this game, I'll put the player's place ribbon and the turn marker in the dialogue. The place ribbon is shown when the game is over, and the turn marker highlights the player who needs to pay a chip or take the card. Create an empty player dialogues object in the dialog canvas. Size and position it to match the player area. Add the player dialog GUI behavior. This reuse script requires a ribbon and a help dialog. We aren't going to have a help dialog in this game, so just create an empty object for that. Next, add an image object, name it ribbon, and set its size to 128 by 128. Set the sprite to a ribbon sprite and position it above the player area. Then add another image object, name it turn marker, set its size to 128 by 128. Set the sprite to the gift icon and position it above the player area. Drag the empty help object and the ribbon object into the player dialog GUI behavior. Make the player dialogs object a prefab and move it down below the screen area. The reuse script code will instantiate a player dialogs prefab for each player and position it over the player area on the dialog canvas. To do that, the script needs to be able to find the dialog canvas. The code does that by looking for the dialog canvas tag. Add that tag to the dialog canvas. The game needs to display the gift deck, current card, and current chips in the center of the screen. I'll start by making a container for these UI elements called center and size it to 200 by 200. Then I'll add an image positioned in the upper left with a sprite of deck back and a size of 96 by 128. The deck should show how many cards are left, so I'll add a text mesh object that fills the image, is outlined, and has a font size that will show 24 in parentheses. It's easy to forget how the deck is built when the computer does it for you. So I'll add some text below the deck that describes what cards make up the deck at the start of the game. To display the current card up for bid, I'll use the drawn card prefab that I made for the player area. Add that prefab to the upper right and size it to 96 by 128. Deactivate the score text. Finally, add a chip image and text at the bottom of the card to show how many chips have been bid so far. Rotate the whole center area to minus 90 so it is not upside down for the players on top. That concludes the game user interface. In the next video, I'll write code to model the game and draw the UI based on that model.